Remember this mother? When the zombies approached, she put her child on the ground, because joining the whisperers meant staying silent. Even if the child was making noise, she had to abandon it. Fortunately, the people from the hilltop took the child despite the danger. Many people wonder what happened to the mother who abandoned her child. Can people really be so heartless? Previously in the storyline, with the arrival of winter, the whispers disappeared without a trace in this area. In fact, they did leave. On one hand, they went out for winter, on the other hand, they went to gather zombies in a more distant area. Now it was time for them to return. After a while, they split into two groups. Alpha led the main force along a smaller path, while Beta and a few followers collected zombies along the way. The woman with a mask on her right hand is Frances, the mother who abandoned her child. The one on the left, talking incessantly, is her sister Mary. Both sisters are members of the Whisperers. There's no mother in the world who doesn't love her child. And Frances is no exception. Despite Alpha's ideologies being deeply ingrained, Frances has been mentally absent and unfocused since her child's departure. As they walked, Frances slowly lifted her head. The sunlight filtered through her mask. Oddly comforting. He's watching you. The sun feels different today. <laughs> Can you feel that, sister? Like it's burning right into our skin. Stop it. Your head's in the clouds again. You'll see that you're not committed to the cause. To her. Thanks to Mary's reminder, Frances regained her focus. Two hours later, they reached a plane, and the number of zombies grew. Frances started to become absent-minded again, lifting her head to bask in the sun's warmth. She momentarily forgot she was surrounded by zombies. Sister, focus. Frances' mind heard her son's cries and remembered the peace of the hilltop. She saw Alpha's cold gaze. Lost in her thoughts, Frances began to quietly sob. The nearby zombies were drawn to her crying and lunged at her. Beta had noticed something was off with this woman earlier. And now the situation had unfolded as he suspected. Mary's words brought Frances back to reality once again. Upon returning to the camp, Frances was left on the ground. In the Whisperer's group, not abiding by rules and causing unrest basically meant no survival. <laughs> he's gone. I love him and he's with us in a better place. Stop. Surprisingly, Alpha spoke up to stop it, which puzzled Beta. Beta then approached Alpha alone and said that this woman was completely broken without her child and that her behavior was a threat to all of them. You will never understand how it feels to abandon your child. Alpha's reason for speaking up was because she shared the same sentiment. In reality, Alpha wasn't the heartless monster who killed without hesitation. Many of her actions were intended to establish a ruthless and powerful image within the group. Alpha thought about it and asked Beta to bring Francis to her. She decided to take care of it herself just to make a statement. Five minutes later, Francis entered the cave, trembling, and even started sobbing. In the eyes of the whisperers, Alpha was synonymous with relentless greatness. <laughs> Everyone outside heard the screams. Mary's heart was even sadder as if she had already guessed what was going to happen to her sister. However, everyone's assumptions were wrong. At that moment, Alpha's heart softened. She understood the feelings of a mother the most. Frances cried in Alpha's arms, releasing all the grievances of the past few months. It gave her a sense of relief and cheerfulness. Ten minutes later Frances stepped out of the cave. The rest of the clan became more curious about what had happened in there. Alpha showed you her grace? I'll never stray again, sister. That place too. It looked so safe. There was livestock. Beta heard the discussions among the group members. Some who had seen the hilltop were starting to yearn for that kind of life. Why? Do not question me. But if she strays again, I will skin her alive for all to see. She unsettles the pack. Then we keep a close eye. Make sure her moment of weakness doesn't affect the others. The others have already spoken of the enemy. The life they saw. It is not alive. It is a fantasy. And the pack must learn that again. They must see it up close. They will. When? Soon. Beta is even more upset that the Alpha didn't kill Francis to make a point. At night, the two Francis sisters lay face to face in bed. Mary can't help but ask Francis how she feels about being alone with the Alpha. In fact, 
Alpha had been to the kingdom's marketplace and met Lydia. Alpha went back to her people and told them that her daughter had broken the rules and she had personally killed her. Upon hearing this, the whisperers revered and admired Alpha even more. The following day, all the whisperers set out once again, with the zombies collected. They were almost ready to return to their territory. Other group members were preparing to join the main force with their own smaller zombie groups. Suddenly, there was a loud noise in the sky. Precisely at the moment when the artificial satellite was falling, this accident immediately attracted the attention of the zombies. And the zombie horde began to be confused. But just then, the otherwise normal Francis broke down again. She saw a zombie that had likely been a mother in its previous life. In that instant, the cries of her own son echoed in Francis' mind. Bring him. You brought a baby out here. Prompting her to remove her mask. At that moment, she was no longer brainwashed by the whisperers. She was a mother who had abandoned her child. The woman was the main culprit behind everything. This unexpected action caught everyone off guard. The zombies began to approach, surrounding them. Beta couldn't care less about hiding and immediately attempted to carve a path to the rescue. Mary, in a state of panic, was also concerned not for her own sister but for Alpha's safety. Subsequently, disregarding all caution, Mary charged into the horde of zombies, pushing them aside one by one. She then grabbed her sister and tossed her aside, pulling Alpha out from the midst of the zombies. Francis was eaten alive by the zombies. After a while, the Whisperers returned to their territory, but they had shifted their camp to a different location. Alpha removed Mary's mask and was amazed at the woman who had gone out of her way to save her. In an effort to please Alpha, Mary claimed that her sister was disloyal and unworthy of being a Whisperer. Alpha was pleased with Mary's words and praised her while further indoctrinating her. That night, Alpha gathered the group for a solemn ritual and named Mary as Gamma, while unsure of the significance. It was clearly a fabricated title of high importance created by Alpha. The next day Beta goes out scouting and finds something and tries to report it to Alpha but doesn't see anyone. Mary explained that she had seen Alpha heading toward the former campsite. Before Mary finished speaking, Beta also went in that direction. He seemed to know what Alpha was doing. Beta arrived at the destination and found Alpha there, holding a cloth doll. It was evident that she was thinking of her daughter. You said she was dead. But you killed her. At this point, Beta couldn't help but realize that Lydia might not be dead, and that Alpha had been lying. Why? Why did you lie to me? She's my baby! I could not get her! They cannot know that Lydia's alive. She was not! Not! After venting her emotions, Alpha regained her composure. Beta talked about what he found out. He had observed smoke rising from the border precisely the time when the three major communities had put out their fires. Alpha didn't care about the reason, anyone who dared to cross their boundary would have to face consequences. So, they set out again, moving towards the border, as they passed a deep pit. Alpha thought of taking a detour to reminisce. To her surprise, she saw Carol standing on the other side. At 6 o'clock in the morning, the sun had just risen, and a horde of zombies was approaching the community from a distance. Eugene, on guard duty, furrowed his brow and promptly sent Laura and a young man out to deal with it. The two of them were chatting and joking. These few zombies were hardly a concern to them. However, soon after, more zombies appeared behind them. This was not a good sign. Six hours later, the community received news and dispatched more people to deal with the situation. By the 11th hour, these abruptly appearing zombies had all been killed. 13 hours later, Aaron returned to the community gate, dragging his exhausted body along. Before they could catch their breath, Eugene's expression turned grim again. He handed the binoculars to Aaron, gesturing for him to take a look. Another large wave of zombies was approaching the community. It was then that everyone realized something was seriously wrong. This was likely no coincidence. It was probably the work of the whisperers. Now, the immediate priority was to deal with the zombies outside. Michonne then gathered all the fighting forces at the gate. She, too, picked up binoculars and gazed into the distance. The zombie horde was already dangerously close. It's going to be a bloodbath. 19 hours later, everyone was exerting themselves to kill the zombies. 22 hours later, the battle was still ongoing. 24 hours later, dawn arrived. <laughs> 
44 hours had passed when they finally dealt with the last batch of zombies. Everyone was too exhausted to move, despite taking turns to kill the zombies. These zombies are really weird. Almost every two hours, a new wave of zombies arrived, but moments of calm were often short-lived. 49 hours later, Michonne, with the binoculars in hand, had a serious expression once more. The zombies were coming again, and it wasn't over yet. Michonne stood on the windmill and looked to the north. A group of zombies was coming from that direction too. Were they trying to wear them out completely? After a while, this group of zombies was also eliminated. At that point, they were dealing with the bodies, but it wasn't over. Eugene expressed that in another one or two hours, the next wave of zombies would arrive, and the number from the north was three times larger than before. Unless something unexpected happened, they would likely have to keep fighting until nightfall again. They had gone without sleep for over 50 hours, and they were utterly exhausted. Just at that moment, a person appeared in the distance. It was Mary from the Whisperers. She spoke in a commanding tone. Hurry up and send people to the border. Alpha wants to see you. Once you're there, drop your weapons and wait. With that, Mary turned and left. Faced with such a life and death matter concerning the community, Michonne called a town meeting. Everyone was discussing fervently, and for a while, the entire gathering was in an uproar. The noise only stopped when Michonne began speaking. Subsequently, the council members took turns to voice their opinions. Aaron said they shouldn't go at all. He didn't believe the whisperers could do anything to them. Lydia, who knew her mother well, stated that Alpha was likely doing this because the three major communities had crossed the boundaries, and there would be consequences. Eugene suggested they could go and talk. After all, the fire incident was unexpected, and extinguishing the fire would benefit both sides. Before Eugene could finish his sentence, he was interrupted by a woman in a very rude manner. My friends died trying to save yours and ended up with their heads on spikes. The Highwaymen want justice! <laughs> The woman was a member of the highwayman who had joined the Alexandria safe zone, so she was in favor of rallying people to the border. Take that lead bitch's head off! Then cut it off! <laughs> and then we'll put their heads on spikes! <laughs> Siddick's body started to feel sick again as he listened to them talk about heads and pillars and whatnot. He desperately needed to get out and get some air. That incident earlier had cast too deep a shadow over him. With the highwayman's cacophony of voices, the room started to get rowdy again. Michonne stands up helplessly and then turns to Daryl. Tens of thousands. Continuing, she inquired of the highwayman, How do you intend to take them down? How are we going to defend ourselves against Alpha if he comes with that zombie horde of tens of thousands of zombies? Now Alpha just wants to talk. We don't have the means to fight back. So we have no choice but to negotiate with them obediently. I want you all to keep an eye on the approaching zombies from the south and the north. Everyone is tired and anxious, but if we don't stand together, we won't get through this. We need unity. After Michonne's words, those who had been shouting earlier hung their heads in shame. Following that, Michonne started assigning tasks, dividing the group into three teams. Gabriel would lead a team to guard against the zombies from the north. Aaron would lead another team to deal with the zombies from the south making sure to eliminate them before they reached the walls. In the final group, Michonne would lead them to the border to meet Alpha. Everyone got ready. Really going in there, aren't we? got no choice. Before they departed, Carol secretly returned home. She retrieved a handgun from under the bed, along with three bullets. Tonight was the perfect opportunity to kill Alpha. Afterward, they set out. The mission was the most dangerous one. There was a high possibility they might not return. Can't say exactly when it started, but in this post-apocalyptic world, humans have become more dangerous than the zombies themselves. After they left, Aaron started to go to the south to kill the zombies. The number of zombies here is less. Aaron was planning to kill them alone, but Gabriel asked him to bring Megan along. After all, manpower was crucial now. Megan looked at a metal bar on the ground. It was much better than a wooden stick, significantly boosting combat capability. However, Aaron ordered Negan to put it down. He didn't trust Negan's intentions. Negan sighed helplessly. He didn't want to provoke a conflict and reluctantly dropped the metal bar. Continuing with the wooden stick he had, the battle against zombies continued until nightfall. Rosita, having recovered after childbirth, joined in as well. The infatuated Eugene guards Rosita next to Rosita. He still harbored a shred of fantasy. Meanwhile, Michonne's group reached the border. They see the stakes from afar. The symbol of grief, where once the heads of their loved ones hung. Daryl scanned the area but didn't see anyone. However, he was sure they were being watched. So, following Mary's daytime instructions, 
They place their weapons on the ground. Only Carol stood still. This place brought her nothing but pain. Finally, Carol reluctantly placed her weapons on the ground too. But she couldn't let go of the death of her son. Carol wasn't concerned about the bigger picture. Alpha's offer of a meeting provided her with the perfect opportunity to act. After waiting for a while, a group of zombies appeared in the distance. Everyone remained on guard, unsure if they were the whisperers or actual zombies. It wasn't until the figures drew closer that one of them removed their mask. It's Alpha. There is one rule between our people. One law. Stay where you are. We crossed one time. Three times. You and the man with the metal arm walked my land. And during the winter storm, you walked my land. During the fire, you walked my land. Michonne was shocked. They had been surveilled all along, even during the freezing winter. You have to be punished. As soon as Alpha finished speaking, the men behind her took out their weapons and stood ready to strike. Alexandria's safe zone is on alert. Carol's hand rested on the handgun holstered at her back, ready to kill Alpha at a moment's notice. But I consider context. There will be no bloodshed this time. So what do you want? Land. Alpha wants to expand the boundaries all the way to the creek. This would encroach on Alexandria's safe zone's hunting grounds. Carol was the first to disagree. Cut off our hunting grounds. We don't have to stand here and listen to this- Carol! To this bullshit. That's it. Come on, we're done. Let's go. We're not. Not until this one lowers her eyes to my feet. Alpha wouldn't usually dare to speak to her like this if she understood Carol's past. If Carol wanted to kill someone, she would have tried to get rid of them any way she could. Alpha is still feeling good at this point, mouthing off about what Henry looked like before he died. We have not slept. I forgive you, mother to mother. This is my land now. You better run. After a while, they rested in a wooded area. Michonne intended to speak to Carol, to calm her impulsiveness. But Carol didn't want to hear words of reason from anyone. Killing Alpha was the only way to ease her pain. Carol walked away to a secluded spot and checked the bullets in her gun. Suddenly, she sensed movement behind her, three whispers. Without hesitation, Carol fired her gun. These people must have come to spy on them. When Carol wanted to chase after them, she accidentally fell to the ground. The rest of the group heard the noise and came over quickly. Michonne instructs the others to search the surrounding area and make sure that if they come across the whispers, they do not kill them so as not to start a war. Half an hour later, they had searched around, finding no traces. At that moment, Carol opened a pill bottle and took out a pill and threw it into her mouth. Michonne observed this and began to doubt if Carol was experiencing hallucinations. The medication was meant to sharpen the mind. How long have you been taking those pills for? Since I got back, it's fine. They're like coffee. We can't stay out here. What? Daryl agreed. Now, they should find a place to sleep. They hadn't rested for two days and nights. Aaron was still battling zombies. Would Negan use this opportunity to take action? 